having uh, students as kind of key participants in this conference is, is super relevant. Um, and again, when Marie and I have been kind of going through our planning for the session, I was really, you know, delighted to hear about this because there's really three reasons why I don't think you can make much progress in a nutshell. You really can't make much progress in systems thinking or compassionate systems thinking in schools without doing this. Uh, the first off is it'll be easier for the students. Whatever you do in this domain of advancing uh, the, the tools, the methods, the practices of compassionate systems thinking, I guarantee you it'll generally be easier for the students than for the adults. Um, and the reason my understanding for this has come to, um, we are natural systems thinkers. In fact, in my opinion, the most astounding uh, accomplishments of the last uh, 20, 25 years of bringing systems thinking into mainstream education is the extraordinary skill of the five-year-old, the six-year-old, the young children who are acutely aware of the system of family, of the system of playground, of relationships. And with just the smallest opportunity will blow your minds by the perceptions they have and the sharpness of their own thinking about the systems they grow up in. So we are innately systems thinkers. The problem is our education system just systematically beats it out of us. Right answers, wrong answers, exams, all the subjects fragmented arbitrarily, uh, certainly be from middle school and beyond, whereas the, the, the learner naturally experiences the world of interconnectedness. Um, the second reason it's critical to include students is that it will really make a difference in shifting the culture. Um, the, the, the culture of a systems school, I'll call it that a compassionate systems school, versus the culture of a traditional school is radically different. In fact, I think I made the comment to Maria, we were talking about this before. I think the single most radical change in this journey is really treating the students as co-learners, as real peers. And I have to use the word peer carefully. Obviously, adults and students are different. You know, kids are not confused. Uh, you know, if you're 35 and they're 15, they know that. So you don't have to remind them of that. I mean, adults often they go, well, we're going to lose all our authority. No, no, you won't lose your authority. You'll lose your arbitrary authority created by your position as opposed to your natural authority based on your life experience and what you have to contribute to the growth of students. But that shift to seeing the students as co-creators of the educational process and the school culture is really vital. I have never seen any school make much progress in this broad area without really getting clear about that. In a nutshell, the traditional system of education is a system designed by adults, done by adults, to students. And the students know that. So that's a big change. And the last reason why this is so important is that if you really think about the system as what goes on in the classroom, what goes on in the hallways, what goes on in the playground, what goes on walking between home and school, what, what, goes, what, goes, on, what goes on in the school shows up in the life of the student, guess who sees all of them? Who's the only one who sees all of them? It's the student. The teacher's view is by, its, by its, the structural uh, uh, um, condition of being in a classroom, teaching a subject, is going to be very much narrower. The student's view is always broader. The student sees all the different facets of the system in a way a teacher does not. So that if you really want to kind of, again, shift the culture, create an environment that's really about learning, there's no way to do it without the students perceiving themselves and being perceived as co-creators of that shift.